as an environmental consultant working in Southern Nevada, I got asked to do diligence on three geothermal power plants for a developer. And then I got asked to do a plan of development for a solar project in Southern Nevada. And then I got asked to do five plans for development. Something was going on. What it turned out to be was that around the turn of the century, legislators had started talking about renewable portfolio standards. Standards that were going to change the way we get energy all over the world. The standards were being set to ensure that energy that consumers used was coming from renewable energy. Energy produced from sustainable natural resources all over. Let's take a look at what we have here in Nevada. You can look at this map, you'll see there's a portion in the southern area that's very red. Do you see that portion that's southern Nevada? It's extremely red. That shows you that the solar potential in these areas is really, really intense. And that's going to theoretically produce a lot of solar energy. Let's take a look at this map of geothermal. This geothermal map shows you that there's only a small portion of the United States that actually has a reliable geothermal resource. Building a geothermal power plant in Maine is probably not going to give you what you need. But in Nevada, currently today, they have 12 times the amount of geothermal capacity as its surrounding neighbors. But the geothermal resource that's interesting is that when you drill, you have to drill over a mile deep. And until you do that drilling, you can't tell what that resource is going to be. So it's kind of an expensive industry to get into, but it can really pay dividends. Because you know the resource will actually operate at midnight, unlike solar. Those geothermal resources that I was doing due diligence on with the beginning of my career, only one of those three actually was ever built and is producing geothermal resources today. Let's look at wind resources. This map here, this shows you that central US has a lot of really good wind resource. Not so much in Nevada. In fact, places like Iowa and Texas have thousands of megawatts of wind capacity. Nevada, we have 154. Well, in 2001, Nevada legislators passed laws that set Nevada's renewable portfolio standard to 25% all energy coming from renewable res resources by the year 2025. Pretty lofty goals considering the fact that 1.6% of the energy in Nevada was coming from renewables at the time. And that was a geothermal resource, but there was no wind and there was no solar. These laws allowed for a gradual increase of renewable energy being put onto the system for consumers to use. Between 2006 and 2011, Nevada saw 12 new geothermal resources come online. That one wind project I was talking about, and six really small solar resources. What was going on with that? We saw from the map that solar was abundant in Southern Nevada. Well, it turns out, the cost of solar was prohibitive. It just costs too much. You know, you also have to remember, solar only produces during the day. So the cost per kilowatt hour was going to be higher in the beginning. Well, in 2013, the solar industry saw a 97% drop in the cost of solar panels. 97%. That put solar on the map. Between 2013 and 2019, we saw 13 new solar power plants come online and only one geothermal. Nevada still hasn't gotten another wind project online. That propelled the innovation in solar panel manufacturing, propelled integration of massive amounts of solar energy in Nevada. In 2019, Nevada saw 27% of its energy being consumed coming from natural resources, compared to the portfolio standard of only 20%. In fact, 
Nevada had started producing some of the cheapest energy in the entire country from solar resources. When we paired the solar energy with the energy storage, we could take that excess energy produced during the beginning of the day, put it in an energy storage device, typically a battery, and then use it to discharge energy at night when everybody was getting home and when we really needed it. We had now created a better integrated energy source in solar energy. At this time, we still hadn't brought on any wind and we didn't see any geothermal resources coming on, even though we really wanted to because of the 24 seven nature of the resource. In 2020, Nevada made headlines again. Not only had Nevada been producing some of the cheapest energy in the entire country, they now had one of the largest solar paired with battery projects coming online in the year 2023. That project is the Gemini project. The Gemini project is going to be 690 megawatts of solar paired with 380 megawatts of energy storage. That project is enough to power 260,000 homes and now we can do it at night with the battery storage. In 2019, Nevada legislators actually upped the ante with the renewable portfolio standard. Today, the standard is an aggressive 50% renewables by the year 2030. And then they tacked on another part, a zero carbon goal by the year 2050. How on earth are we going to do that? We had seen a glimpse on how that works with the innovation in solar panels in 2017. A zero carbon future is going to look very different than it does today. Today we have massive amounts of geothermal and solar energy being used to produce about 27% of all energy consumed using natural resources that exist in Nevada and in the desert. Our future is going to require us to think bigger, to expand our access to natural resources and zero carbon energy. For instance, new transmission lines being proposed already by utilities, as shown in this map, will provide Nevada access to wind energy being produced in the east and access to hydropower in the west. Innovation is going to become key. Innovation with not only how we harness those renewable resources to produce energy, but how we integrate all of that. For instance, Nevada has received a $15 million grant from the Department of Energy to look at geothermal resources and the technology used to identify those resources and optimize how we can harness that geothermal for energy production. Nevada has also received a grant from the Department of Energy's Solar Energy Technology Office to look at integrating distributed resources or things like rooftop solar and residential energy storage to better integrate that into our grid and maybe provide some additional grid services on the transmission and distribution system. Utilities are also looking at different types of large energy storage to optimize the technology and really make it much more cost effective. Things like large man-made hydropower systems, or mechanical energy systems. The question is, how do we best harvest nature's natural resources to best create and produce energy? Through legislation, innovation, optimization, and integrating all of it.